Meet Jordan the Boss. They're a challenger Darius main on the North American server who's maintained challenger average for the whole of season 10. Darius is known as a low elo destroyer who can't handle high elos, but Jordan succeeds on Darius at the highest levels of play. I'm going to show you how he does it. Darius is a scary champion at many ranks, and currently sits at the second highest band rate of all champions in League. Wait what? Yoon has a 62% band rate? No wonder I never see him. Anyway, the normal Darius playstyle is as a top lane snowballing machine that plays hyper aggressive and goes all in 1v1s from the start of the game. A normal Darius is not scared to take 1v1s or even 2v1s top, as if he outplays them he can win the game solo. This is why Darius is banned so much, and why so many people struggle to play against him. Darius is not respected and countered well, he'll be very effective as a champion. As ranks increase, Darius becomes harder to play as people start to learn how to use his weaknesses against him. Take for example his massive suit of armor. High elo players know he isn't going to catch them in that thing. He must wait a ton. Darius's main weakness is his lack of mobility, which affects all aspects of his game, including laning phase, trading, and team fighting. At higher ranks, Darius will not even be given the chance to kill you five times in lane and get a pentakill in a fight with his ultimate, as players are too good at kiting him. That is where Jordan the boss's playstyle comes into play. This is the ultimate way to play Darius and has allowed him to climb further than any Darius has before. This playstyle is so strong that he is still in Challenger, playing the exact same way every day, and still he cannot be knocked out of the rank. Jordan has played over 800 games of Darius this season alone, as well as 1,400 games in Season 9 and 1,800 games in Season 8. Firstly, this guy might be insane, but also he clearly knows Darius better than any other player in the world. He's perfected the playstyle over these three years, and now we can copy it. Jordan takes Ghost Flash every game, as one of the ways he fixes Darius's mobility issues. He knows that Darius needs as much added mobility as possible, and Ghost is the most valuable summoner to give it. Ghost is a very strong summoner at all points of the game for Darius. He uses it in lane to start up 1v1 fights and chase the enemy under their tower. He uses it in fights to quickly swap targets and chain kills together and he even uses it. Well, actually, that's pretty much it. Ghost turns Darius into an actual champion that can run down carries in fights, not even giving them a chance to kite him before he brings the eggs down. At level 1, Jordan takes Q. In Challenger, it's unlikely the enemies fall for a level 1 all-in, so he rarely gets the chance to start W and go for them, but it does happen. At most ranks below Master, I would recommend starting W in matchups where you can reach the enemy for auto-attack trades at level 1. If not, Q start is best. Jordan uses Q at level 1 to pick up any CS he cannot auto-attack, and also uses it to push the wave to get a fast level 2. One really cool trick that he has is to use his Q to kill multiple minions at once, so that he levels up before the enemy expects it. He walks at them as level 1, using Q on the wave and the enemy, then takes E second and pulls them back into the wave to go for an all-in trade. Darius can win all-in early fights against pretty much any top laner as long as he stacks his passive, so this is a great strategy to bait enemies in. At level 3 he takes E, and begins waiting for the enemy to make a mistake. In Challenger this does not happen very much, and he often goes more than 10 minutes in lane without being able to find a fight. But at lower elos, this patient playstyle can pay off very well, as the enemies will be making more mistakes. Any time an enemy walks too close to Darius, or disrespects his damage, Jordan ghosts and all-ins them. Jordan starts combos with a Q so that he can continue moving towards them. Starting combos with an E is much more risky, and you don't have any way to get back on top of them, or if they use a dash. The Q lets Jordan stay on top of them where he uses W and continues to auto-attack. If the enemy flashes away or gets out of auto-range, he uses E to pull them back in, just like when you have a bad solo Q game. So you think about quitting League forever and uninstall the game, but then the next day, you're sitting there watching Worlds and the game feels magical again. So you reinstall, only to realise your mistake, but it's too late. Anyway. What was I talking about? Sometimes Jordan's wave will be pushed to the enemy tower and it may get stuck. If this happens, he goes for a mid lane roam or invades with his jungler as he doesn't want to risk staying so far up in lane. Darius can 1v2 if there's a gank, but it's much harder before he gets level 6. It's also extra bad for him to die to ganks as he doesn't have teleport, so he will lose a lot from a death. At level 6, Darius can play more aggressive as long as he stays high HP. Junglers will shy away from ganking Darius who has a lead as they don't want to risk giving him an even bigger one. Jordan has a few good strategies at this point in the game to grab kills. The most effective is to use the bushes to your advantage. Jordan will push the wave, then pretend he's going back to base by walking away. He then loops around into a bush out of vision and waits for his prey. He has the patience of a monk. No, not that kind. Waiting for the perfect moment to engage the enemy. He knows that if he goes at the wrong time, the enemy will just jump away. But if he waits long enough, he'll be able to get behind them and stop them from being able to run. He also knows at this point, if he's able to get full passive stacks on the enemy, he wins the fight no matter what, so he'll constantly be looking for chances to get a good fight. He doesn't take every fight, he waits for the perfect one, as he knows with the, all of the experience he has which one he's going to win, 
and he takes those ones every time. Team fighting is where Darius normally struggles the most, but is actually where Jordan has the most success. He's not always able to get kills in lane, but is always able to get kills in fights. He plans ahead for which fight he's going to join, so that he can start saving his flash and ghost. He makes sure his top wave is pushed, and bases to get as much power as he can. In fights, he again waits patiently for the enemies to walk close to him, then hits the go button, ghosting instantly and building up stacks on a target that cannot outrun him. He dunks the first person, then uses the remaining ghost duration to chase down any others he can, using flash as well for chase. I will talk about his runes later, but he takes Nimbus Cloak and Celerity to give him even more movement speed in fights, which enemies never expect, even in Challenger. To outrun a ghost Darius, you need to already be out of the fight by the time he presses ghost, and sometimes he can still catch you. Late game, he continues his playstyle of joining fights with ghost and racking up kills. He doesn't split push or look for 1v1s in the side lane, but does pick up farm from them as much as he can. He then looks for the next objective or potential fight and groups with his team. Darius will always be the most effective if he is already in position before a fight starts, as he is unable to reposition very quickly, so you need to be ready for fights early. If possible in fights, Jordan will build up full passive stacks on the enemy frontline and use that to get a kill with his ult, which he can then use to transfer stacks to the backline carries. Jordan does not dive with Darius or flash on the backline instantly, as he knows they'll just kite him away. He tries to disrupt the fight by finishing off the frontline so the carriers have to start running and cannot even return damage to his team. Once again, his patience is rewarded in fights, and if you don't need to use Ghost or Flash early in a fight, you can use it at the end to pick up stragglers. Much like any Bruiser champion in League, positioning and choosing your time to fight is everything, so practicing patience will help you succeed more in these fights. What about matchups? As with any Challenger one trick, he doesn't care what matchup he picks into. He struggles into ranged top laners, but finds ways to get an advantage, like the bush strategy or roaming. The best matchups for Darius are low damage, low mobility tanks, like Poppy, Garen, or Volibear, where Darius can easily tank their damage and stack his passive on them. The worst matchups for Darius top are champions that he can never reach or stay on top of, like Kale, who gets free farm all lane, Malphite, who can steal his movement speed to escape, and ranged tops, like Quinn, who can keep hitting him from out of his range, then kite him if he ever flashes forwards. The worst team comps to play against are ones without tanks and with lots of high mobility, high damage, and high range champions like Ezreal, Velkoz, Caitlyn, and Cassidin. Crowd control and slows are also terrible for Darius to play against since he wants to run on top of his enemies, so avoid picking into those if possible. For items, Jordan builds Triforce first pretty much every game as it is great for both Darius' damage as well as his mobility. If he is against a ranged top laner like Lucian or Jace, He'll buy boots before Triforce, so that he has a chance to kill them in lane. If not, then get the boots after Triforce. Preferably Mercury Treads for the tenacity. Unless the enemy team is very high AD based, then he will go Ninja Tabai. After this, Jordan gets Xerix Gage, which helps again with tenacity in fights, as well as gives him unexpected survivability that lets him turn fights with the shielding. The next item he gets depends on the enemy team, either Spirit Visage versus mainly magic damage enemies or Randuin's Omen against attack damage majority teams. These are currently the best tank items in the game, which is why they're the go-to items for top laners like Darius after he has enough damage. Also, the Randuin slow is incredible for Darius as he can guarantee getting full passive stacks with it. Finish off the build with a situational item. For example, if you're a solo tank, then Jordan will get a Gargoyle's stone plate, or you could get a Deadman's plate for some extra movement speed. You don't really want to be buying more damage at this point as you already have enough to kill all five enemies if you can get to full passive stacks so you normally just buy resistances. A good final build would be Mercury Treads, Triforce, Sterics Gauge, Spirit Visage, Randuins, and Deadman's Plate. For runes, Jordan mainly takes Conqueror, but has also been experimenting with Phase Rush as a keystone. Conqueror is more valuable in most situations, but Phase Rush can be satisfying to use and can let you win top lane matchups against more mobile champions. The Conqueror page is Triumph, Legend Tenacity, and Last Stand. If enemies don't have much CC, then you can replace the Tenacity with Legend Alacrity. For his secondary runes, he takes the Sorcery Tree with Nimbus Cloak and Celerity for maximum speed. For the Phase Rush page, he takes Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Gathering Storm with the Resolve Tree secondary, including Bone Plating and Unflinching. I will link Jordan the boss's OPGG in the description so you can see his challenger progress. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all the support the videos have been getting. Leave a comment about any unique players you want to see a video about, and let me know of what you think about Darius in High Elo.